Hi folks, this is Stephen from the Gold Coast Art School. Last time we were talking about brushes, different brush shapes and what they do. Today I'm going to talk about old brushes. Brushes you think aren't any good anymore. We've got some little stunners here that I have had for many, many, many years. They started off as nice, healthy young brushes and over the years, and we are talking lots of years, they slowly worn down to these funny little stubs. Often students say when a brush is this old and worn, they want to throw them out and get a new brush. I would suggest that old brushes do things that new brushes can't. And I'm gonna show you a couple, of, I'll just show you an example, and then I'll actually do a bit of a demo with oils on what an old brush can do. Let's wander over here and look at this picture that I, I did show you last week. Now, this is an acrylic painting, and you can see from the shine, I use different glazes, that's another story. But under all these transparent colors, there is a structure of white. So where the light hits a subject, I use white to establish that. And what sort of brushes do I use? It's not detailed work, it's texture. And so I use these funny little fellows to rub out. And I've got more control over the surface if I have a strong, tough, little bristle brush that fights back, so I really have to push it. I'll do a demo, it works the same with oils as it does with acrylics. And so all underneath this, you can see the light bits, that's all done with white as a dry brush technique. And you can also, I'll show you some more textured brushes later that I have not just worn down, but I've actually stressed. And to do that, you get these little extra details and textures. But all that was done with these little monsters. I love them. And uh, I'll be very, very, very sad when these finally die. As I said, this technique using old bristle brushes can be used for doing lovely soft cloud techniques. Here's an example here of using contrasting tones but blurring them softly into each other. Here I've got an old underpainting that a student left behind. You can see it's been a little bit shop soiled, don't worry about that. I'm going to show you what we'll do. I'll just mock up a little bit of cloud work. You can see originally this was done as a white back with thin paint and we sort of know where the white's going to go. A little bit of titanium white here to spread that out. And I'm going to take this lovely old brush. This started life as one of those brushes that you use for doing the edges of um, window sills. It's just a common hardware style brush. Very flexible, very hard wearing, and they last. As you can see over the years, I wasn't watching that YouTube video on how to clean brushes properly. So I have this stump of solid paint. This is very wicked, but what happens is that it wears and follows that solid paint. So most of this is paint, just the outside edge is bristle. Okay, what do we do? We load the brush up, we stab the brush into the paint and then wipe. Well, at this stage, I don't have to wipe the excess off. I want to get rid of that anyway. So I'll just push that in. You can hear the texture of me thumping away here. I'm using a lot of pressure and I'm just following basically the, the colors that, the tones that were already established by the other artist. Then the fun starts and you use this bristle brush because it's very tight, very forceful, it only opens up a little bit like that and lets the paint out. So here we go. I'll just start with a little bit of underpainting. See how you can get these lovely, soft, cloudy, atmospheric effects just by pushing backwards and forwards. Now this is still just the underpainting. I'm gonna build this up a little bit more and introduce some more color. I find with clouds, interesting combination is using phthalo blue and vermilion. Sounds weird and scary, but check it out. When they collide, because one's a green blue and the other is an orange red, 
with this wonderful, lovely, smoky, angry, kind of cloudy, stormy cloud look. The idea is to just get the balance halfway between red and blue. The blue will always dominate because it's that kind of color. Thalo blue, strongest pigment on the planet. I'm gonna need quite a bit of white to fight that. Okay, now I have got a tiny bit of liquid here, but seriously, this is a dry brush technique. You don't need it very much, but if you find it's just too dry, all right, so just mix ourselves up a sort of a angry, cloudy kind of color, and we'll just very roughly stab, whack it on. We can go darker later. And I'm just basically cleaning the brush on the, on the canvas at the moment. Just blocking in your major, major zones. Now when it gets to the point that I want to manipulate the paint, it's time to wipe the brush. Okay. Just to reduce the amount of paint that's in there. Reload with the white. Just tickle that a little bit. Look at that. Vincent would be proud of me using working like that. Now we start the process. We just work it backwards and forwards. Now notice the angle of the brush. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm sort of starting to just what we call surface and edge blends. Okay, Just blending the existing paint backwards and forwards very, very softly. Just poking it not so loud now because we're being a bit delicate. You can still work fairly quickly with this technique. We're getting into the dry zone here, so it's a bit crunchy sounding. You can hear that the bristles fighting the surface. That's good, we want that. Now, that's a fairly rough surface. I would like to continue to work on that and just soften that back. Put a bit more dark in there, a bit more angry blue, bit of red, bit of blue. Bring in some of that, give it that bruised stormy cloud look coming along. The red sort of helps with that. If you just use the blue by itself, it's a bit too pretty pretty. It's not really the correct color. See that? That is not really a, that's not really what you call a cloudy sky. You need to subdue that with a little bit of vermilion. I like to use vermilion because it's an opaque pigment and it's one of the few reds that can su successfully fight back against that very pretty blue. All right, now can you see that sort of how it's soft, soft and smoky looking? Then you can come in and be a little bit brave and just sort of have a few strong contrasting edges if you want because you have that flexibility with an old old brush like this. That's pretty messy, you can go softer than that. If you did want to go softer, I've got one of the student brushes here. It's not that old, but it's a cheapie. And even cheap brushes can do things that uh, brand new brushes can't. The advantage of this, it's, it's a younger brush, it's not rock solid. This has done the hard yards. All I need to do now is just soften it and to get a slightly longer bristle, you can get, notice the angle, you can then just tickle those edges and then make them look nice and smoky. You can take this further and build it up and build it up and build it up, make it really, really smooth just by tickling those edges and pushing one tone into the other.
Okay folks, I've been working on this a little bit more. Remember I was using this funny old brush. Now that was pretty good. It made, managed to get the basics in for what I wanted to do. But I've brought in a couple of little brushes. Also, these are very much old used brushes. That's an example of a new, newish filbert. And that's how this one's worn down. Look at how much paint's built up on that. I'm going to just do some finishing off here. Now this is, this is okay. This is about 90% finished, but I'd just like to put, add a little bit more to the clouds here. And I'm going to use one of these and we'll just add a little bit more white, just dab in a bit of white. What you do is you load up the brush and then you wipe the excess off. This way we can't do a lot of damage. So what we do, all I want to do is accent some of these white bits and you just do it and in a burnishing round, swirling round and round. And we'll just get some of these edges happening. Make these, some of these little areas need to glow a bit more. So they need a tad more white in the, in the middle of them. Those areas that were very textured last week, we're just using that texture to help take some of the paint off this brush. And we can help establish those glowering. You know how clouds often develop light within themselves because they're just a bunch of billowing crystals of of water so they contain light as well and that's where you get those wonderful wonderful glowing effects inside now you can see here just by adding a little bit of thin paint but it's not so much thin paint the paint itself is quite thick it's straight out of the tube but having these short bristles they really push and strain and push that paint around so you can get these lovely nice uh, much better finishes. See now I can just by dragging a little bit of thin paint over the top of that dark grey, I can soften it up. Where it goes scratchy like that, just wipe this off, wipe the excess off so now it becomes just a blending tool and this stretches the paint even further and it takes care of those little bumps that were in the paint, in the underpainting and it gets in and around them and that makes those edges softer. Now you can also, I'm going to use another brush for this, some of these areas you can make a little bit darker and angrier if you want to. Um, depending. Now the combination I'm using, same as before, it's just a little bit of vermilion, well quite a lot of vermilion, and a little bit of phthalo blue. They neutralize each other and create a lovely, lovely dark grey. Now I'm going to put a little bit more accent under here. Again, using this technique so I get these lovely, soft, blurry edges. And by pushing up against the paint, you can create sharp edges, sharp-ish edges, because this is cloud. We don't want it completely hard and fast. I might put an extra bit of dark in there, that looks a bit thin there, so I just put a tiny bit there, just putting it down with that, then I'll blend with this. So that sort of pretty much completes this part of the lesson about making old brushes work for you, because they do, they're fantastic. There's, you can't buy brushes like that. That's about it for this, this is for this oil painting episode. Next lesson I'll be talking about how to modify a brush deliberately and in some cases really destroying a brush to get a certain effect that you can't get using a normal brush. Anyway, thank you for your kind attention and uh, we'll catch up with you later on the next project of brushes and all the wonderful things you can do. Thank you very much from the Gold Coast Art School.